from Hollywood, it's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. I don't like it. Me neither. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different talk radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOP. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. I want to say a special hello, a real shout-out here to one of our listeners. I'm very proud. I don't know who you are. I know you have to maintain your anonymity. But I am very proud of you. Every once in a while, I look at the news. I look at a photograph. I look at a video. See a story online. And even though my name hasn't been mentioned and I haven't gotten credit, I know that the word of this program is spreading like wildfire. And there is one particular listener today I want to salute. And I know you're a listener. You can hear Dean J. D'Amelio applauding down the hallway because, as you know, CBS spared no expense soundproofing this room. We're going to have to move him further. I don't know how much further down we can move him. Pretty soon he's going to be sharing a table with Aaron over across the street at the deli. That's right. But... uh, In any case, uh, again, congratulations to one of our listeners, because I was looking at a story on TMZ that uh, Dean showed me, and uh, there's no doubt in my mind you are one of our listeners. By the way, over the years, many times uh, we run into this. uh, Some of you longtime listeners may recall at one point there was a guy trying to uh, evade the police. It was a freeway chase on television. And it was happening during the Tom Likas show. And um, the anchorman said uh, that uh, the reason the guy was fleeing police was because there was a dispute over the payment of child support. And on the air, I said, uh, I guarantee you that guy's a listener. I said, in fact, I'm going to prove it right now. If you're watching Channel 9, if you're watching this, uh, this freeway chase... Watch this. And then I said, okay, the guy in the car who's being chased by the police, I know you're a listener. Just put your hand out the window and wave to us. Let us know you're a listener. And we were in delay, so it took a little time. There was a little bit of a delay, but sure enough, less than a minute later, the hand went out the window and he waved on television. So we know we know where our listeners are, and there have been a number of incidents like this over the years. And here is one now on TMZ. This uh, just came into TMZ, and uh, I'm wondering if you've seen this yet. I think it's fantastic. It says here, this is a, a current a current post on TMZ. TMZ has learned that, and I don't know why. I don't know why Harvey Levin has a problem with this guy. Maybe it's because he's straight. TMZ has learned that there's a skeevy bastard out there. What? Should I not have said that? Uh. TMZ has learned there's a skeevy bastard out there. (laughs) There's a skeevy bastard out there who's pretending to be entourage creator Doug Ellen to try to get into girls' pants. And he's apparently gotten good enough that a note went out to agents and actors last month warning them against the skeezer. I love this. (laughs) Yes, he's an Italian guy, about 37 years old. 
<laughs> hangs out in Palm Springs a lot. That's right. <laughs> says here. <laughs> It says here, one veteran manager tells TMZ that the fake Doug Ellen called him back in 2006 wanting to meet a specific and very hot female client of his that very night for a role for the upcoming season of the show. This manager says to TMZ, the guy knew more than enough about the show and Mark Wahlberg, who's the executive producer of Entourage, and particular members of the crew to convince me. Says here he also knew the name of Ellen's assistant, casting peeps and future storylines. And when the not Doug called prospective girls, it was all good for a while until he started talking about girl on girl sex. <laughs> and then there was a reference to the Dinah Short Desert Classic. <laughs> It's, <laughs> it says here, we're told that he'd ask starlets if they'd be comfortable sleeping with another woman on camera. Then, whether they'd ever done that in real life and other very personal questions. A source says HBO hasn't tracked the guy down yet. The network had no comment, and TMZ says they tried to reach Doug Ellen, but they had no luck. A TMZ, very upset about this, but I want to congratulate you. I know you're out there. And I just want to say that uh, this is exactly what your professor teaches. You know, it's one thing to go around saying you're uh, Adrian Grenier or you're, uh, you're Turtle, uh, because it would be very easy to prove these things aren't true. How clever of our listener, and I know it's our listener, I know it, to, to watch the credits on Entourage, find out the name of the producer, somebody who never appears in public, who can't be verified, really. There's no way to know. Does anybody know what Doug Allen looks like except people in the television business or people who've worked on Entourage or on his other projects? No. Like I tell you, if you're going to pretend to be a hockey player, don't pretend to be, you know, Sidney Crosby. You know, pretend you were, you play on the third line of the Chicago Blackhawks. Nobody knows who those guys are. And I, I watch hockey and I can't tell you who they are. So our listener uh, took my advice. And I know it's our listener. I know it. I, kn I feel it with every fiber of my being. So he figured out who the producer and the uh, the creator of Entourage wa was and then uh, started telling people that he was him. Did a little Googling, like our friend down the hall does that Googling all the time, and he always knows everything about every little fact about every movie and every TV show. Finds out a few facts about Doug Ellen and the... The crew of Entourage and probably pulled a few names out of the credits or something. And um, got uh, uh, agents to send their uh, female, their hot female actresses his way so they could uh, discuss parts in the upcoming season of Entourage. I think it's brilliant. Now, um, if you are that person, I will guarantee your anonymity if you would call in and tell us the whole story, because I think this is great. By the way, this scam has worked so well that the casting office at Entourage has sent the following letter out uh, to various agents and to actors. It says here, it has been brought to our attention that a man claiming to be Doug Ellen is calling agents and actors alike about auditioning opportunities for Entourage. Well, what a great scam. This is a good one. Please be aware that this is not Doug Ellen. Our producers will never call you directly unless there's a typo in here. Even they make typos. Unless it has been facilitated through the casting office first. We are sorry for any inconvenience this has caused, and we are making a strong effort to resolve this issue ASAP. Thank you. Signed, Entourage Casting. I guess they didn't want to put the name of that person because then you start pretending to be that person, which would also be a good idea. That's a great one. Yeah, hi, I'm the casting director for Project Runway. <laughs> yes, we're uh, casting the upcoming season. We just need to ask you a few personal questions. 
What a great scam. So uh, I know the odds are slim that the person we're talking about is actually tuned in at this very moment. You should know that they, they're they on to you, and uh, you might have to pick another identity now to assume in the future. Uh, just a little tip. But uh, it, if you are that person, I'd love you to anonymously tell us the whole story. If If not, I'm wondering how many of you out there have taken your professor's advice and gone out there and pretended to be, well, God knows what. Playboy photographer, that's the common one. Uh, a sports star of some kind, or, or better yet, a sports non-star. You know, you're the reserve outfielder for the Atlanta Braves. <laughs> <Does anybody> know? <laughs> really, does anybody, after Chipper Jones and uh, John Smoltz, can anybody name the Atlanta Braves? Well, now, now multiply that by a, a factor of a thousand for chicks, okay? They... <laughs> No way they know. Okay. But I'm wondering how many of you are using outrageous, and I, I don't mean, you know, little lies like I'm an attorney, I'm a doctor. I mean, you have pulled the names of well-known people like this person did here, this this guy who's pretending to be uh, Doug Ellen, the uh, creator of Entourage. I'm wondering if you have pulled, like, a really outrageous one, like you've claimed to be somebody just outrageous, like famous successful, a name we would recognize. And I'm wondering how many chicks you have bedded down by using this process. I'd like to hear all about it. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. You can have an opinion. I just don't want to know what it is. Why is that? Because I just want you to put your left leg at the 12 and your right leg at the 3. Oh, 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 that is so irritating to hear you say that. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Well, according to TMZ... Some guys going around Los Angeles claiming to be the creator of Entourage, Doug Ellen, a guy you've never seen, wouldn't recognize if you saw him. And he's been calling uh, agents, trying to get them to send their hottest actresses over so they can discuss whether they'd be comfortable doing a little girl-on-girl -girl action on next season's Entourage. And uh, I wonder how long it took for them to finally figure out this was a scam. <laughs> but I know it's one of our listeners. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Here's Ram on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Uh, long time, first time. Pleasure to talk to you. I'm sure it is. Uh, you know what? I've actually, uh, I, I was listening to his show a couple of months back, and someone called in saying uh, that he used to pretend he was a minor league baseball player. Yeah. And I myself, I heard that, and I thought that was a wonderful idea. I go to the clubs and bars every weekend, and I started using that. And believe me, it works, brother. It definitely works. Really? I've been getting chicks left and right. Do they ask any details, or they just accept you at your word? No, no, no. Because I mean, I'm fairly, I'm fairly well built. I work out. I'm 22, so I'm, I'm I'm in the age where I could be playing. You know, if I if I had the skills. And they ask, what team do you play for, and everything. I actually used to live, live in uh, Lake Elsinore, so I say I, I used to play. I play for the Lake Elsinore Storm. Uh -huh. And they they believe me, brother. They believe <laughs> me. <laughs> Yeah. How many works. women? How many women do you think you've banged? Uh, telling them that lie. Um, since I've heard that, maybe once or one one a week, maybe every time I walk. Really, one a week. week. Yeah, with that line. <laughs> so you gotta love it, and uh, every other, everyone listening, you gotta use that line if you're you know if you have the body for it, it'll it'll work for you. It'll work for By you. By the way, you might as well just give yourself a promotion uh, to the major leagues. You, the Dodgers <laughs> have the Dodgers have many outfielders. I might as well, huh? You might as well. That's right. Do you? Uh, do you? Are you Hispanic? Uh, yes, I am. Perfect. Oh, are you kidding me? Perfect. <laughs> yeah, they got that uh, that new uh, Dewitt, I believe, the third baseman. He's great. I might as well say, um, you know, his backup or something. Not you're his backup. That's right. Or you could uh, <laughs> say that uh, you know the Dodgers have a log jam in the outfield. You know, they got uh, you know Ethier and Kemp and. They've got Andrew Jones, and they've right, got Juan right. Pierre, and, and you, and uh, the, the five of you just can't get enough playing time. 
<laughs> I'm, I might start using that this weekend. We'll see. Give it a shot. Great. Great. Thanks. Uh, take me out of old, old school, please. All right. Old, old school. Here you go, Ram. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom Sean on the Tom Likas show. Hello, hello, Tom. Hello, Sean. How are you doing today, sir? Do you care? I do, sir. I'm doing great. Um, I was just saying, um, me and my buddy, we actually always use this technique. He's a minor league baseball player that plays for the Las Vegas Fifty One, uh -huh. the uh, Dodgers minor league team, and I'm a professional MMA fighter. <laughs> And you know what, Tom? The MMA fighter part always gets them because they might know one or two fighters. But other than that, they know nothing about the sport. So you can tell them whatever you want. You can tell them that I'm on pay-per-view next month or a month or two from now. I'm the undercard. Whatever you want to tell them, they eat it up like candy. I'm telling you, Tom, this is the best technique. <laughs> like, I've gotten, like, ten numbers. I, I remember going to this bar, and me and my buddy, we got, like, ten numbers apiece just by telling them this stuff. I think that's great. Now, what do you think of this one, the guy who says he's the creator of Entourage? Oh, I think good for him. I mean, you know, he's taking advantage. I mean, women lie all the time. I mean, great for this guy. I hope he's banging every one of the chicks that he gets to uh, come to. I mean, what a great concept. Uh, you use that to say that you're auditioning the hottest actresses in Hollywood? Oh, it's it's foolproof. Everybody I mean, wants to be on Entourage. It's a, exactly. one of those shows that uh, the buzz on it in Hollywood is much bigger than the audience would justify. I mean, Entourage only has a couple of million viewers, but uh, everybody in L.A. who's in the entertainment business watches it, oh, and a lot of people want to be on it. Yeah, I don't, I don't watch it personally, but I know everybody knows what it is. I mean, I know what it is. I know some of the character names, and I don't even watch the show. So right. I mean, and he's getting these girls, he's actually calling these girls agents and getting the girls to come to him. That's the best right. That's why I think this guy is doing so good. And he doesn't even have to go to a bar and uh, chat them up. Exactly. This guy's just getting the women to come to him. He's lining them up. <laughs> hey, Tom, I need you to take me out with something special. Can you take me out with uh, Dino's voicemail? Oh, Dino's voicemail. No one's asked for that in a while, but we certainly... Good. Okay, you just got lucky, hon. Let me tell you, it will never happen again. You are such a piece of shit. I don't know what this Tom like is. I'm so cool, and these are my rules. That's such bull shit. Like, I can't believe the crap that you listen to this jackass. You never are bull crap, and I don't want to ever, ever hear that from your mouth ever again. You goddamn sucker. I don't want to hear it ever again, you stupid butt crack. I don't know what he's talking about. Oh, you know, sleeping with someone, blah, 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 on, like, such and such date. That's such bullshit. You know, you are through. You are never getting your ass laid in this town again. I am telling everyone, you stupid little asshole. Goodbye. <laughs> that never gets old. Never gets old. By the way, Dean never got laid after that. Do you know that? She told every woman in L.A. That's why he went gay. That's why he went gay, Gary. That's right. Three, two, one. <laughs> I expect him to burst in the door any second. <laughs> 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Let's say hello to Al on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Al? I I got the 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 entourage guy beaten with my story. What do you do? I pretend to be Freddie Prince Jr. Now that's interesting because what's the last thing Freddie Prince Jr. did? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, I'm foreign. He's so the Scott, he's the Scott feeling. he's gonna be the Scott Bale of the next decade. Hey, that works for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I'm from South America, so. It gets challenging having an accent to pretend. So we go to the bar, and inevitably a girl goes to one of my friends and says, Hey, that, your friend looks like Freddie Prince Jr. And my friend goes, What do you mean looks like? <laughs> and I'm like, Well, 
And, and of course, I have a cold. I went to a game the night before, so I can't really talk. <laughs> <laughs> How perfect is that? But by the time they have to figure it out, too late. <laughs> That's right. So you've been banging chicks as Freddie Prince Jr.? Uh, yeah. Yeah. And and they ask about the wife. It's kind of perfect. Yeah, who did he marry that Freddie Prince Jr.? Uh, that, that oh, Sarah fucking. Michelle Geller. Yes. Oh, she's ugly, dude. I, that's the worst part of pretending. <laughs> <laughs> so they think that you are the married Freddie Prince Jr. having sex with them. No, and the worst part is when I moved here, I had no clue who that guy was. And keep, people keep saying that to me. And I'm like, go away. So then I, I ran in one of the movies, I survived, so it was like, oh my God, this dude, it looks exactly like me. It's like, this is painful. I'm going to use it. <laughs> 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 no, I, I mean, and I get, I don't have a MySpace page, it's a music page with a different name, and I still get an email saying, dude, you look like this guy. I can do it on MySpace, but I have my ways. Oh, I love that. I have a question for you. Yeah. All right, well, by the way, before you ask me the question, do, do women actually like when you're having sex with them? Like, oh, Freddie. Oh, Freddie. Uh, I don't really pay attention. <laughs> it's, it's, it, that's not the point. I just wondered if I, you'd ever been referred to as Freddie in the sack. I don't I don't ask. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, my question is, yeah. how do you feel about Chilean wine? Chilean wine is spectacular. Are you kidding me? Uh, I, I was wondering. I, I didn't mean to call because I'm, well, that's what my family does, mostly. Really? Yes. Ch Chilean wine is uh, spectacular, and uh, I have flown on the airline Lan Chile, and uh, they serve, <laughs> if you fly in business or first class, they serve, like, uh, some of the best reserve Merlots and Cabernets. And, uh, I, Which one, Concha y Toro? Or oh, uh, that and others. I've had many, many of them. Uh, some of them blow me away. Well, my man, next time you're there, um, my stepbrother is the, um, what do you call in English, um, the manager of export. For yeah. Uh huh. And well, my family it was like my, the portraits of my ancestors are on the vineyard of Santa Rita. Really? So next time you head over there, we'll manage you with like an inside tour or something. Oh, you know, my cousin, my cousin went back after visiting me. I made him listen to you because I my drive, and he's like, I gotta listen to this online, and now they're listening to you over there, man. I love that. I love that. You hang on, Al. We're going to get your information. Because I For real, yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I'm, I'm, uh, Chile is on my short list of places I want to go. So, uh, Oh, yeah. Um, you should try to avoid the summer. <laughs> yeah. Which or is, the winter. Yeah. Well, I understand. Uh, and uh, your summer is our winter. So, uh, hey. Yeah. Hang on. Dean Larry would be best for you. Why? Well, you guys, uh, you and Dean will figure it out, and uh, yeah, okay. I want. I definitely want to come. No doubt. Sounds good. All right, Al. Look at that. Got a little side bonus there. That's a famous winery, by the way, folks. Concha y Toro. Ooh. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. Shelley on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hello, second daddy. Hello, dear. How are you? Not that I care, but I'm just being nice. Hey, I have a problem with you, sir, as most women do. Yeah, what else is new? <laughs> the only problem I have with you is sometimes when you're just talking about things when you're not taking callers, you talk a little bit too long, and it just takes you a little bit of time to get something out. And I got kids in the car that are yelling at me, come on, Mom, come on, Mom, come on, Mom. So next time, you know, could you speed it up? My you job, you have to understand, the ratings are based on how long I get you to listen. <laughs> now you're well, laughing. As soon as I you're laughing. Off, I turn you back on. That would be a I'm... that would be a funny joke if it were true. It is based on how long I get you and everyone else to stay tuned. So oh, I can't. I can't. If I give you the payoff to everything I'm going to say in 30 seconds, I'm out of business. I know, but I run back in the house and I turn you on. So then, once I shut the car off and I go in the house, I'm screaming at them to get out of my way so I can get in the house. Oh, and well. Turn the radio on. Well, this is a time-honored tradition. If you've ever heard the old radio guy Paul Harvey, 
Yes. Uh, and he does the rest of the story. You have to sit there and listen for five minutes to some boring story about somebody you don't care about. Yeah. But, he, but he hooks you in because now you want to know who he's talking about and he doesn't tell you to the end. Yes, exactly. And he exactly. says, and now you know the rest of the well, story. Tom, well, Tom, I want to say... Ask me, by I'm the way, sorry. Shelley, Shelley, I just want to review something with you, okay? okay? Ask me the secret of comedy. The secret. Just ask me what the secret of comedy is. What is the Timing. secret of comedy? <laughs> Got me on that one. I hey, certainly I wanted to did. tell you, I encourage my nephews to listen to you. They're, sometimes they don't really listen. They're 21 years old and they want a serious girlfriend. I'm like, no, 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 no. No girlfriends allowed. You need to listen to Tom Likas till you're at least 25. And then you can have a serious <laughs> relationship. And then I guarantee you, you're not going to want to have one. So I, you know, all the women out there, you know what? And it's, it, this is so true, is women at least me, when I was single, I thought a lot like the men you try and mentor is sometimes I want to go out there and um, lie to these guys, and which women do, um, just for a one-night stand. There's nothing wrong with so, that. So uh, who will you pretend to be? Well, I always told them my name was Cassandra. Cassandra <laughs> What? No, I just told them my name was Cassandra. That's that's it. I, I lied to them about my name. But there were other girls that I had gone out with that would tell um, guys, you know, some wild, wild story. But I'm the one that got them to do that because they would always get mad at me because I would say, well, what's your name? Well, my name is Cassandra. What are you going to tell them that for? I'm like, what's the difference? I'm never going to see them again. Who cares? <laughs> Who cares? That's exactly right, Shelly. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. On occasion, I may wake up and uh, be dreaming that, hey, no one's in the house, it's empty. What would it be like just to wake up, go work out, play some tennis, play a little bit of piano, go for a bike ride, and then go out and hang out? You want to know? <laughs> Stop by my home tomorrow morning. <laughs> it's the Tom Likas Show. Southern California's FM Talk Station, 97.1 Free FM. From Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for being part of our program. We appreciate it. TMZ says that there's a guy going around Hollywood able to be the creator of the TV show Entourage, Doug Ellen. And he's calling uh, agents, asking for their hottest actresses to come in and talk with him. And then uh, the guy who claims to be Doug Ellen starts asking these girls whether they're into girl-on-girl -girl action and other personal questions. And I know this guy's a listener. I just know it. Maybe he's not listening right now, but I know it. And I'm wondering how many of you guys have uh, tried this trick or who uh, use it all the time, for that matter. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Rob on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, how you doing? Doing okay, Rob. All right. Get this, Tom. I'm at a house party, and there's three three chicks, two blondes and a brunette. And uh, they come up to me, and, they, you know, we're talking for a while, and I'll, we're talking about jobs. Got around to it. Uh, two of them didn't even have jobs. And I, uh, I was like, hey, you, you two should work at uh, my dad's Hooters. He owns the Hooters down in Costa Mesa. And so they're falling for it. They're, they're, they're all into it. They give me their numbers right away. Uh, a couple days later, I, I, I give a couple a call. Ended up sleeping with all three of them separate, separate times. <laughs> uh, and did they ever get your phone number? Did they ever try to call you again? Oh, yeah. They, I, I was getting text messages. I just I, I, After that, I was just done. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't have anything else. <laughs> That's just amazing. Uh, you know, women who tell you when you just say, hi, I'm Rob, and they say, yeah, I'm not that kind of girl. I don't just sleep with people on the first date. Isn't it amazing when you've got a good story, the same women? Are just complete whores, and they'll jump right into the sack with you. Oh yeah, but Tom, you know every every girl's a whore. You just got to have the right amount of money or the right words. You just have to have the right story. You don't even oh, have yeah. to have any money. 
This is what I keep telling you. know, I get these people who call me all the time. Your stuff doesn't work for others. Yeah, you're rich and it works for you. But, it does, but I'm, I'm telling you, you don't need any money at all. All you need oh. is a good story. You need, oh, you don't even need a good story if they're dumb enough. You know. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Tom, can you take me out uh quiet number nine style? Yes, I can, Rob. Here you go. Number nine. The remorse I feel will always be with me. From those to whom much is given, much is expected. Number nine, number nine, number nine, number nine. one 800 800 tom That's our telephone number. Kevin on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Kevin. How you doing? Great. Uh, I was just calling, following up that uh, MMA fighter story. Right. Gold. Me and my friends, we love it. What we do is... We'll be at a party. Yeah. We'll go over by the girls that we choose, and they'll be like, oh, look who it is, a professional MMA fighter, blah, blah, blah. And then later on, we'll approach the girls, and it's gold. We got them to meet us at a hotel. They thought I was a professional fighter. My buddies were my training buddies, and they met us at a cheap motel, and just it was on. <laughs> I hope that the uh, women out there could see what whores they really are, and I hope the guys could see uh, that, uh, yeah, really, these women who give you a story, uh, that, they, that they're not that kind of girl, they are that kind of girl. Oh, they all are, Tom. And I'm, I mean, I have no money at all. You took them to a $50 a night cheap motel and told them <laughs> next time it'll be more expensive because we weren't sure if they were going to show up, but there will be no next time. <laughs> <laughs> The next time we take them to the five star, and oh, they just dug it. They dug it all up. They thought we were all rich. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Nothing like it. I'm proud of you. Nothing like it, Tom. We I learned from the best. Can you take me out with the bonk hit? I certainly can. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Cody on the Tom Like His Show. Hello, Cody. Yes, hello, Tom. You, bu you busy over there, Cody? Uh sure am. <laughs> How's it going? I'm doing okay. All righty. Hey, I got a story for you. I was at a bar once, and uh, this this chick came up to me, right? And she's like, "Oh, you know, you're that uh, you're that famous motorcycle uh, rider, right? Motocross." She's like, uh, she's like, uh, you know, you're that guy. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm him, you know. And she's like, uh, well, what's your name? And I was like, uh, Ricky. She's like, yeah, that's the one, Ricky Carmichael. And, uh, you know, just totally, just totally played it out and uh, went with it. She, you know, she called me out on it. So I uh, just went with it and ended up taking her home and uh, just, uh, just handling it. So. I wonder if there's any chicks out there who think there's something wrong with doing this. Because all we're hearing from is all the guys who are right. raving about how great this tactic is, this method works so well. Right. Uh, women must be awfully embarrassed. They're not even calling in. Right, I know. I know. It's all guys. Because <laughs> the secret is out. We know you're a bunch of whores and sluts. Exactly. And if we have a good enough story, you'll give us what we want. Right. You don't even need any money. I mean, you know, I've made good money, but, uh, you know, that's it, always a plus. But, uh, you know, I don't use it. <laughs> I mean, anybody who had sex with the guy who said he was Doug Ellen... Just to get a part on Entourage? Right. You're a whore, ladies. Exactly. You're a whore. Exactly. <laughs> and you prove well, my point, ladies. Yep. I, 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 You know what I'm amazed at? People who actually admit this. Like somebody had to tell HBO or the Entourage office or whatever. Somebody had to tell them that they slept with somebody. <laughs> right. And it turned out the guy was not Doug Ellen. Yep. He said I was going to get a part, and I didn't, so I just wanted to let you guys know. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you owe me a part of the show. I slept with somebody, and I never got my part. <laughs> oh, I love your show, Tom. Thank you, Cody. All righty, thanks. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's John in Portland, Oregon, home of the other white meat on the Tom Likas show. Hello. 
Hello, Tom. Yes. So here's what I do. We have a big brew pub up here called McMinimums. Right. We've been there. Yes. I tell them that I'm one of the master brewers. <laughs> like everyone any... wants, yeah, everyone wants to sleep at the bartender, but if you tell them you're a master brewer, they're even more excited. Like anybody could name the master brewer from McMinimums. Exactly. If they ask questions, you can just dumb it down by saying, well, it's a mixture of different hops and malts. I mean. <laughs> and uh, are you kidding? In uh, Parkland, you could be uh, Paul Allen's brother. Nah, I don't want to be that. <laughs> I mean, come on. Well, we only have one uh, really good sports team up here, and, well, they're not even worth watching, so why be associated with them? Because oh, all chicks care about how much money he has. They don't care about uh, how the team is playing. Uh, for that, I'd rather go and find someone else like uh, <laughs> the Microsoft guy. <laughs> Same time as second cousin or something. <laughs> Thank you, John. one eight hundred five eight hundred tom That's our telephone number. It's Dennis on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Dennis. Hey, um, so um, I, I've been told that I look like uh, John Cho, the guy from Harold and Kumar. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and you know, they say Asians all look alike. Well, <laughs> <laughs> how convenient for you. <laughs> no, but this one, um, uh, I, I didn't even know the movie Harold and Kumar. I've never seen a movie. So I had to look it up, you know, Google and, and get some information about the guy. And I actually uh, bought a poster of the movie off of eBay. And I have it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. And, um, Did you autograph it to yourself? <laughs> so, yeah, I'm, I, I've been told a, a lot of times that, you know, hey, uh, you know, are you are you John Cho? You know, I'm a big fan, and I'll be because I, I go here at the the bars here in Las Vegas, and yeah, I tell them that I'm just here visiting, you know, and uh, I'll be going back to L.A. to uh, do some taping for the part two of the Harold and Kumar. Yeah, there's a sequel coming out. It uh, could be uh, out any minute now. Uh, so, do a little research. You'll be able to tell people that the sequel's coming out, and you just finished it, and. Oh, yeah, you can augment the story. I mean, Dean used to uh, pretend to be all kinds of people. Dean used to find a website where they had all this advanced information about upcoming movies that were in production. And then he would tell chicks, oh, yeah, I'm going to be in Pearl Harbor. I'm going to be in Titanic. And, you know, by the time these movies came out, uh, Dean had already done his dirty work, you know, so it didn't matter if they couldn't find him in the movie. So what? <laughs> Yeah, so uh yeah, it works it works all the time for me and uh mostly I get the I get the Asian girls which is, you know, fine by me. That's great. So So yeah, that's all I have to say, man, and I have you to thank for that. I'm so proud of you, Dennis. I really am. All right, bye. Bye. There he goes. One well, I'm sure John Cho is uh <laughs> creeped out completely. <laughs> One eight hundred. There's a guy in Las Vegas going around getting laid, saying he's him. Bye. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. Let's say hello here. Oh, wait a minute. Let's say hello to Pedro. Pedro, you're on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, what's up, Tom? How are you? I'm doing okay, Pedro. Love your show, man. Thank you. Uh, well, about the t general topic. Um, my cousin's Emilio Estevez. Um. You know, he's he's this old movie star. He's not doing much now, but... And now, is he really your cousin, or you just say he's your cousin? No, he he's my cousin. You know, I, I literally, I literally had a conversation with him Friday night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, he, uh, you can actually even Google me up, man, and uh, and I'll come up, and you can actually see the resemblance. We, we, we are cousins. Really? Yeah. Wow. So you tell women that your cousin is Emilio Estevez, and, uh, and then you get laid. And he really is your cousin. The Tom Likas Show.